If the claims are right, all previous political membership records have just been smashed. First, as I said, the candidate Patrick Brown says he's got a smashing number. He signed up, he says, more than 150,000 new members by the June 3rd deadline. And while that left some jaws on the ground, hang on to your jaw. Within a day, Brown was bested by Pierre Polyever, whose team claims he signed up 311,000 new voting conservative members. That's more than double Brown. And that's more members, by the way, than the entire CPC party currently has. Let me give you some more perspective on that. In 2017, when Andrew Scheer won the leadership race, he signed up fewer than 10,000 new members. 10,000. He won. The party already boasts about 270,000 members. So if the new numbers are true, Brown's got 150,000 and Polyev's got 311, the party has yet to verify all these. But what a massive boost this would be for the big blue tent. By the way, these are memberships that aren't free like the liberal membership. These are $15 membership. The party has not released the uh, list of the new members to all the candidates' teams. So we can't verify this, and no other team can verify this. The Jean Charest camp, for example, claims his tally is in the tens of thousands, but they refuse to release their numbers. Other candidates are also keeping mum on their tallies, just saying we're doing well. Everybody says that. But why is this battle over membership so significant? Look. Having members to vote you across the country is the key to winning the leadership race because the Conservative Party uses a ranked ballot and proportional representation to keep their leaders. Let me explain. The party awards 100 points to each of the 338 ridings across the country. And every district uh, has 100 points. They can be divided up between candidates depending on the percentage of the vote they get in that riding. But every riding is 100 points. So let's say you have 5,000 members in a riding in Alberta. That only gets you 100 points if you win that. And if you, say, have, uh, I don't know, 120 members in Quebec, also worth 100 points. So while new memberships might be a sign of how much groundswell support a candidate has, as we saw with last week's Ontario provincial election. It's all about voter efficiency. Where are those votes? But given Mr. Polyevra's allegedly signed up more than double the new members of Brown, is the Brampton mayor worried he doesn't have enough down-ballot votes to fend off Mr. Polyevra's po popularity? Could Pierre Polyevra just win on the first ballot? Let's find out. Joining me now, Conservative leadership candidate Patrick Brown. He's also the mayor of Brampton. Um, Patrick Brown, good to have you. Okay, we haven't seen all the numbers, but we've seen some big numbers. You first say that your campaign has signed up over 150,000 new members. Is that the final tally number, and have you released those transparently to the party? We've surpassed the 150,000 figure. We're very excited about that uh, milestone. Um, the previous records we saw in party leaderships were more in the range of, of being in excess of 40,000. So this uh, uh, blows uh, um, blows the, the the previous records that we saw in the in the previous conservative leadership. So I think it speaks to the fact that our campaign really connected with so many groups around the country that weren't involved in the conservative family, and we've really brought in the the, the tent of the party. So yes, I'm. I'm extremely satisfied with our membership drive and uh, looking so, forward to the next stage of the campaign. Okay, but so what's the final number? So, so do, you, do you have a final number? Is it like is 150,000? Is it 160? Do you have a number? I know as of Friday morning, we had surpassed 150,000. We don't, okay. don't have the final number based on the last uh, the last day of membership sales because it was a whirlwind of getting uh, names in, and we haven't got that information back. Uh, from the party. What about distribution? Uh, that's the key. The big number is important, but every riding is worth 100 points. So distribution is key because you got to get efficiency. Uh, can you give us a breakdown of where your vote is distributed? If, if from the east, Ontario very key, Quebec very key, BC very key. Well, I think our campaign um, has one advantage, and I think we have the best distribution in the country. If you look at the areas that we sold the most memberships, they tended to be the weakest areas in, in the country for the Conservative Party. And with every riding being worth 100 points, if there are 3,000 memberships in a rural Alberta riding, conversely, if there's 200 memberships in a downtown Vancouver riding, then um, less memberships uh, wins a riding. Um, in Vancouver than it would in rural Alberta. And if you look at our membership drive in places like uh, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Regina, the greater Toronto area, Windsor, London, Montreal, uh, Halifax, we did extremely well. And so I'm 
I'm excited about our distribution. I, I'd add to that in places you haven't seen significant growth in the party membership, like Thompson, Manitoba, Yellowknife, um, Whitehorse. Uh, we had extremely successful membership drives. Mm. The, your Pierre Paul Evers camp basically says you're lying. Actually, that's the word they use. Patrick Brown lies a lot. Patrick Brown never says anything um, accurate. They go back to the fact that there's a history of membership in question when you were the leader of the PC party in Ontario. Uh, after uh, you resigned, the interim leader, Vic Fideli, said that, in fact, you did not sell 200,000 memberships as you had talked about then. It was more like 133,000, so there was just a, a close to 70,000 questionable leaderships. What do you say to your opponents who says oh. you're not telling the truth and you have a history of lying about memberships? Well, Evan, they made the same claims in the 2015 Ontario Conservative leadership that our membership drive wasn't as successful as it was. And if I recall in that 2015 leadership, I won by the largest margin in Ontario Conservative Party history, taking on the party establishment. And I realize right now, you know, Pierre is the establishment choice. He's part of the elite of the Conservative Party. And right now they're worried that uh, um, that the, the country club uh, that they've controlled for a long time, uh, uh, there's a big fight now for the direction of, of the party. And so Jenny Byrne obviously is an expert at spin and PR, and, and she's engaging all those tactics right now. But we're very confident in the success uh, of our membership drive campaign and looking forward to okay, so, uh, so, the next so part of this. You think it's going to withstand scrutiny because, you know, in the past, in your book, you had likened uh, the use of pre uh, you know, prepaid credit cards, which, by the way, are not used anymore. That was something that you likened to jaywalking, even though it was against the rules and it was potential membership fraud. I just want to be clear here. When people, your opponents are saying you have a history of this, you're not telling the truth, don't buy it. Pat Brown has not signed up 150,000 members. It's a lie. You're well, the, under scrutiny. The, you believe these memberships will hold up. The, the party won't even process um, a membership that was used with a prepaid uh, credit card. And so um, that was... Uh, Never something that, that, that our campaign uh, looked at. Uh, we're confident that all our memberships will withstand uh, the scrutiny. And uh, I think it's a great thing for the party. The party is now going to be more diverse than it's ever been before. We're going to be rooted with membership and infrastructure in parts of the country where the party really didn't exist. So I think it's great news for the party. Jenny Byrne has said that uh, Pierre Polyevra, they've signed up 311,000, 312,000 members, you know, more than double what you've signed, you've signed up. Um, that would give them a first ballot victory. What is your view? You thought 150,000 was good? He's got 311,000. Uh, what do you make of his membership? Well, I think Jenny made that claim a day after we came up with our big number, and I think they were a little bit shell-shocked. Uh, listen, for, for that number to be correct, we'd have to have 750,000 members in the party. I don't think what that that's what the party membership is, but as soon as we get uh, a full list, we'll be able to find out whether that claim is accurate. Uh, and interestingly enough, the only campaign that doesn't want uh, a full membership list to be released, or even interim membership list to be released, is the Pierre Polyev campaign. I think that speaks volumes. Okay, so are you, just right now, are you calling on Mr. Polyev to release, I mean, the membership lists are closed, it's closed. You would like to, him to have a, a list of all the members he signed up, and you're and you've given the party a list of all your members. Is that it? Yeah, I want the the party to release the full membership list from all the campaigns. Uh, that's what they've done in every previous leadership campaign. Um, it's only fair; it's part of our democracy, where the candidates can pitch their ideas and their vision to the party to the full party membership. And it's interesting that one campaign doesn't want that release that that list released, and I get it begs the question: Why? Okay, uh, one of the next phases, okay, membership was phase one. Now you've got a court down ballot support. If you're going to survive to the second ballot against the, the juggernaut of 312,000, you've got to get other support as well. Uh, social conservatives like Les and Lewis. In the book that you wrote, you said so, so, social conservatives are dinosaurs who are becoming less and less relevant um, for every day. Um, you know, how do you win social conservatives if you've called them dinosaurs? Well, first of all, Evan, I think you asked me about that our last interview as, as, as well. But, you know, listen, I, I made it clear I don't want to relitigate uh, debates on gay marriage or abortion. I believe the country has moved on from that. Having said that, I, I think there are some great ideas that um, Dr. Leslie Lewis has raised during this leadership campaign, particularly on making adoptions easier. Um, listen, every voice in the conservative family matters. I'm willing to listen to 
a, a, a diversity of perspectives. And I, you know, I, I give Leslin Lewis credit. She's authentic. She she says what she means. She's not trying to say two different things to cater to everyone in the party. And so I admire um, how authentic she is in her positions and, and, and in her convictions. But that was a mistake. So you regret you're retracting those old statements. No, I, I'm saying I don't agree that, that that we should revisit the abortion debate. I don't agree that we would ever revisit, uh, um, you know, gay marriage in this country. Um, but I, um, I certainly think, um, particularly um, the views that that Leslin has raised, and Leslin has raised views well beyond um, the abortion uh, discussion. I think she's got some really compelling public policy ideas uh, that 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 should be considered. And so I, I'm not de delegitimizing. Um, social conservative ideas, I think there's a, there's a number of them that have a lot of merit. Uh, sadly, today's the one-year anniversary of, of the killing in, in London, Ontario, a family run down by a driver because they were Muslim. Um, there's a problem with Islamophobia. Uh, we've talked about it. You have criticized Pierre Polyevre for not um, uh, voting for a, a, a motion in the House about that. Um, and suggesting that maybe the barbaric practices hotline, cultural practice snitch line, um, was something that he has not renounced from the Harper era. Um, can you just be clear on a day like this? What are you trying to say about him? Because I just want to be clear. Are you saying he's Islamophobic or not? I think we have a responsibility um, as as public servants to fight hate and intolerance wherever we see it. And today is a, is a, a, a tragic reminder of the consequences of, of Islamophobia. What happened to the Vzal family in London, what happened in Quebec City are consequences of, of hate. It, hate it invariably leads to, to violence. Do I think Pierre Polyev was on the wrong side of history when he refused to denounce Islamophobia in the House of Commons and voted against it? Um, yes. Do I think he was on the wrong side of history trying to have a press conference alluding to the fact of a niqab ban? And in our country, yes, unfortunately, he's been on the wrong side of history on a number of these issues. And, you know, it, it's never the wrong time to correct course. It's never the wrong time to say, yeah. you know, that you're mistaken. There's been a number of conservative MPs that did so. What I would say is I'm proud of my record on this topic. Is I was the only conservative leader in the country that supported the motion condemning Islamophobia in 2017. And at every instance in my time in public service, I have fought hate and intolerance because it's a scourge in our society. Well, well, let's talk about that. Um, on the morning of the mass shooting tragedy in Uvalde, Texas, you tweeted out you had scrapped the Firearms Act here in Canada in its entirety. Then the massacre happened. Um, you followed that tweet up a, a week later saying the Prime Minister's politicizing the tragedy. Um, but obviously Canadians don't want this kind of culture of, of guns that they're seeing in the U.S., according to polls. Um, would you ban assault-style weapons like the AR-15 that was used there that, that is now banned in Canada or, or not? So part of the problem is we have bad legislation on top of bad legislation. We've got a series of sort of press conferences building amendments to existing legislation. What I really think we need to have is a, is a conversation of how do we get uh, illegal guns out of our country? It, it's not about targeting an innocent uh, um, farmer or, 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 or sportsman or hunter. I see it in, in the greater Toronto area. I see where, where, where guns come from. And it is 90% a smuggle from south of the border. And right now the government's done nothing about the influx right. of, of illegal guns into our country. And so uh, I want to deal with, with, with where guns are coming from. A and I see it. I get reports and briefings every week from the chief of police. We have a problem in this country with illegal smuggled guns. And right now the government of Canada is more concerned about press conferences pretending that they're going to do something th about it rather than actually securing right. our border. That's the conversation I want to have. Just last thing before I leave you. So you got the numbers coming out. Um, you still think you can win this or can Mr. Pauly ever win this on the first ballot with those numbers? No, I think we got a real path to victory. I think we surpassed anyone's expectations of, of what uh, the amount of memberships that, that we can sign up. We blew every previous record out of the water. And so I'm looking forward to the next stage of the campaign. All right. Uh, big numbers coming out of this campaign. Really remarkable numbers from everybody coming out that we've seen so far. Patrick Brown, thank you, sir.